All right, so I wanted to make a brief video answering some of the issues that were brought up on Twitter just now, so I'm going to put them on YouTube as well. The biggest issue that exists here is religious freedom. Religious freedom in America is not defined by the group, but by the individual. It's Religious freedom is an individual um, right. And I'll give this example. I, I work as a prison chaplain. And we're told this. This is the official stance of the state where I work. I don't need to mention where it is. That if, let's say, for example, a Catholic inmate says they are required to have a kosher diet according to their sincerely held religious beliefs. So then we ask the, the Catholic chaplain who works there at the prison, the deacon, the priest, whoever, he says no. And in Catholicism, you don't need to keep kosher. So then the, the inmate says, no, it's not good enough. So they ask the bishop. The bishop says no, he doesn't have to keep kosher. They ask the cardinal. The cardinal says no, he doesn't have to keep kosher. And <clears throat> they ask the pope. And the Pope says, no, you don't have to keep kosher. So, so the inmate says, no, I do have to keep kosher. He's Catholic, but he has to keep kosher. Who do we have to listen to? Do we listen to the Pope or we listen to the inmate? The answer is we listen to the inmate. As long as what his claim is, is comes from a sincerely held religious belief, uh, it doesn't even need to be a required practice now under the RLUIPA law federal law it just has to be an aspect of the religious uh, you know practice or belief and the state is required to give a kosher meal even though it might cost a little bit more and in the state where I serve it's not that much more compared to other states where they serve flesics and things here they just serve uh, peanut butter and jelly you know that's what it is <clears throat> and it's the same thing here you're saying as someone of the Jewish faith that there's nothing in Judaism against um, against having a secular education with all due respect there are certain people who disagree I I don't personally disagree. I personally um, believe that it's good to be educated about the world, and I, I strive to be educated. However, I want to share with you uh, the following story. This week, my Rebbe, the Kalva Rebbe Shlita, sent the following letter to 20,000 people. Uh, I'm not going to say the whole letter, but in the letter he tells a story... <coughs> that uh, the Austro-Hungarian Empire sought to make similar laws um, demanding certain subjects be taught in all schools and, uh, meaning in the Jewish schools, the Orthodox Jewish schools they would have to teach certain studies so uh, a group of rabbis among them was the, the first Babavar Rebbe, Shlomo Babavar was the oldest grandson of the Devachayim um, it's his son's yard site today. You've been seeing Bob over. Um, the uh, he, he was there among the other Abunim who were there uh, for this, uh, you know, meeting with the education minister for the Austro-Hungarian Imperial Parliament, and. The education minister said, I don't understand. We have a member of the parliament who is a pious Orthodox Jew. He, he even, in the middle of the sessions of parliament, will get up, he sees it's close to sundown, and he'll go say his afternoon prayers. That's how pious he is. And he sees no problem with this, <coughs> with, with these subjects being taught in the Jewish schools. And so the Baba Rebbe very wisely answered, 
um, that you know different Jewish communities have different cultures, which include religious cultures. Um, you know, meaning the the religious expression of culture or cultural expression of religion, and. This Jew, he's indeed a pious Jew, but he comes from a German background or an Austrian background, one or the other. And so the customs and the culture of the Orthodox, pious Orthodox Jews in Germany is different than the culture of the, the religious culture of the Orthodox Jews in, in, in Hungary or in Galicia. That's pretty much the answer, and, the, and and so he said it's a violation of religious freedom, and the and the education minister accepted it, and now, and, and and the gazera wasn't made, and they left it up to the schools, you know I'm sure the schools in Vienna, they volunteered to teach these subjects, but the, the schools in, in further east, they didn't, and that's and the. Kalver Rebbe explained, you know, the Jewish people from ancient times, they had different shvatim, different tribes, and each tribe has its own ways, and, if, and their own culture. But we have to be unified, even if our culture is different, to protect the other tribes to have their culture. Meaning there's a reason why Svartim are not Ashkenazim, and why Ashkenazim are not Svartim. There's a reason why Satmar is not Lubavitch, and why Lubavitch is not Satmar. There's a reason why the Yekas are not Litvakas, and why the Litvakas are not Yekas, even though they, have, they might have certain things in common. We all have certain things in common. And we have our own culture, and, and, it's, and our culture is a religious expression. I remember a very Choshev Rosh Hashiva who I had, I was close with. He told me stories. You know, he was a very from a very very extreme right wing Sapper, and he uh, he was a Rosh Hashiva in Antwerp, and he was living uh, near where I was a Rav, and so I would go visit him every week and talk to him, and learn with him, big big Talmud Chacham, big Tzaddik, and. Uh, down south, uh, so he was in uh, such a gullus, a yid from Williamsburg, and he uh, finished his elcha gullus, and uh, it was a big bilbul. People know the story. So, this rabbi, he told me stories. First, he would always, and he would repeat these time and time again. You know, first of all, I mean, he knows about Chuba. And he said, you know, there was a Ger who wrote a letter to the Rambam. There was a convert who wrote a letter to Maimonides. And he said, uh, you know, you wrote most of your works in Arabic. So I could, I could study them. But your, your magnum opus, the Mishnah Torah you wrote in Hebrew, I don't understand it. <clears throat> could you translate it to Arabic so I could learn it? And the Rambam's answer was, it's, it's not my job. First of all, I don't have time to do it. Second of all, I regret that I wrote those other books in Arabic. I should have written them in Hebrew also. And third, even if I had time to do it, you should learn Hebrew. Not You should come up to us. Not we. You should bring, come up to the Torah. Not we should bring the Torah down to you. You joined our people, and it's a bit, very good thing you did. You should, you should grow in Torah and be able to learn on your own in, in Hebrew. That's one story he told. Another story he told was, I, I don't remember who it was, a Hungarian Rav. He, ha, he had to learn Mitam and it was, it was a similar type of issue that he wanted to be able to maintain his position as a Rav in order to prevent the Neologin, the Neologistin, to, from, uh, from taking over 
you know, his his, his kahila, his shul, the, the, they would have that the Hungarian government would have taken away his his stellar and, and put in a neolog, put in a reform. The, the, that was the Hungarian reform called the neolog, and it would have been a, a big Corbin would have been a, a big disaster for the community. So the rabbi, he was forced to learn Hungarian uh, in order that he should continue to serve in his position and stand as, a, as an heir l'chid. So then years later, you know, the time passed, whatever, and uh, he was walking with someone, I think, I think he was walking with Rav Brach, who was the... In um, uh, what's the name of uh, Kasha? It's the Kasha Rav of Shol Brach. It's also Rav of Krula, I think. And um, Rav Shol Brach was a you know, very frumer, right wing Rav, Hungarian Rav. And uh, this older Rav. He was saying, Ah, Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashem. Thank God, thank God. It's a, so, Vus Epis, Shol Brach asked him, he said, He said, I was forced, Matama Mimshala, I was forced by the government, I had to learn the Roman alphabet, to read Hungarian, and, um, and I prayed that I should forget it, because, it, because a pious Jew should only know the, the Hebrew alphabet, the, the Lashon HaKodesh alphabet. The Yiddish is written in the same alphabet as Lashon HaKodesh, and the Jewish Aramaic is written in, in the Lashon HaKodesh alphabet. He said, that's the only alphabet a Jew should know. A Jew shouldn't know any other alphabet. This was his sincerely held religious belief. And he, unfortunately, his religious rights were trampled upon, in his opinion. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. Um... And he, he said he had prayed that he should forget the, the Roman alphabet, the Latin alphabet. And, uh, and he said, you know, finally, he, he, do, he doesn't recognize these letters anymore. He's, his, his mind has been purified. Now, whether that's right or wrong, and, and I, I personally disagree with that viewpoint, although I'm no one to disagree with someone like this, but I, 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 I don't, it's not my approach. However, that's a sincerely held religious belief. And to this day, we have Jews who have such a sincerely held religious belief. And we have to protect their religious rights even if we disagree with them. And if you're not happy with it, don't send your kids to that school. And if you're not happy with it, open, and, and, and you don't see any alternatives, it's a free country, you open your own school. And in, and in the free market, you compete, and, and you try to get people to come to your school because I, I could understand the geschmack that you want to have like a Hamish type of school, but where they where they have a good English program. I, I understand that, you know, and you want to have your culture with, um, but but you want to have a more robust secular education. Um, but. So you do that in the free market, and you, uh, and that's the answer. Um, to the one who said, you know, why do you want to, uh, who I believe might have been someone secular, maybe not even Jewish, you know, why do you want to rob these children of an education? So, so but again, so for the first question, as far as, well, there's nothing in Judaism that says that uh, you can't be educated in these secular studies? The answer is, your Judaism is not my Judaism, my Judaism not your Judaism, and, and, this, and this one's Judaism is not that one's Judaism. And it comes down to the individual, and it's the, and what really, what, what, what are they trying to do here? They're trying to take away rights from the parents. They're trying to say that parents are not smart enough how to raise their kids. And this is a problem throughout the left-wing Democrat ideology to take the children away from their parents. 
and that's what is really going on here. But even uh, the truth is, is uh, no rabbi has the right to say, certainly not for another community, what to do. And you know, these corporations exist in schools, and they pick which rabbi they want to follow, and it's and it's in the parents who choose to send their children to school and they're going to complain, well I have a lot of peer pressure from my parents, I don't really want to send this kids. that's not that's not that's that's not the government's business it's not the government's business that you are too weak to stand up and say I don't want to be part of this community no if you really believe that and you really think it's that bad so so you you can you, you even if it means you're going to lose all your friends, even if it means you're going to lose your relationships with your family, you know, we who became Bali Truva have to run that risk or do that, lose our friends, not have the same relationship we have with our family. Some people, their family disowns them. It's the same thing. If you really believe this, that's your right. And the truth is, it's nobody's business. If you want to stop being Hasidic, you want to be modern Orthodox, you want to be Reform or Conservative, you want to go be a Buddhist or a Muslim or an atheist, it's nobody's business. But just the same, it's not your business to tell someone else what to do. Freedom works both ways. And there's no such thing, show me where in the Constitution is there a right to an education. And the thing is, they are getting an education. That's the next part of the issue. You're saying, oh, you know, they, they, uh, they're not getting education. They're getting a better education. You know, the law says in New York State that you have to, private schools have to give an education that's substantially equivalent to the public school education. And it's my belief that every yeshiva, even the most cloistered yeshiva, and maybe especially the most cloistered yeshivas, give not only a substantially equivalent education, and there are many yeshivas, modern yeshivas, or even literature yeshivas, even the Hasidic girls yeshivas, or girls schools, they don't really call them yeshivas in the, in the Hasidic world for the girls they just call them schools but they do give a robust uh, secular education but the, these beliefs, this is up to the parents to decide a child doesn't have he can't tell his parents now you want to compare it to committing an actual crime against a child It's uh, which one person here did, it's not it's not. You can't compare it. It's sick for you to even compare it. And you know, and the truth is, is those types of crimes happen a lot more in the public schools than they do in the religious schools. The reason why it makes the news in the religious schools of all the religions is because it's, it's a, a man by dog type of thing. These things really, and a lot of the things are exaggerated. A lot of times they're not happening. They're people who are just angry at the religion who make up lies. That's the first part of it. But the second part of it is why, when it does happen to religious uh, communities and religious schools, why is it happening? I mean, if you look into the history, I remember Bishop Fulton Sheen was saying that in, in his time, the 1950s, the communists were infiltrating the religious organizations, the churches, synagogues, so forth, and planting people to do these types of sins to lead the youth away proper path. And that's what's part of it. I mean, the public schools are already all Marxist communists, and that's why these types of things go unfettered. There's a, a Twitter account, Leave the Public School, that is every day, a few times a day, horrible, disgusting, evil stories that happen in the public schools that we're forced to pay for. He's saying, oh, the yeshiva's taking government money. Yeshiva's not taking, nobody, there's no such thing as government money. It's taxpayer money, and we pay taxes as well. And we're being forced to pay our school taxes to go to these commie 
uh, brainwashing places that they call public schools. I went to public school. I know what kind of garbage a public school is. And you want to turn my holy yeshivas where I send my kids to, to the garbage? And it's much worse now than it was 20 years ago when I was in public school. Much worse. And, and you want to destroy our holy yeshivas and turn them into that garbage? It's, it's not only substantially equivalent, it's substantially superior. And we're not pushing it on anybody else. You have the choice. You don't have to send to, to, to our schools. So many people feel like they're forced to go to the public schools, so they have no choice, and they don't want to send their kids to public schools. But they're trapped by the system. And one kid in a public school costs more than a, a family of six in, 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 who are taking food stamps and Medicaid. And Baruch Hashem, a lot, peop, a lot less people are needing it now because the economy's better. Baruch Hashem, I'm not taking any more. And it has nothing to do with education. I, I, I have a college degree. When Obama was president and he purposely destroyed this country, I, I, I was working five jobs I couldn't make more than 20, 30,000 a year. Now, Baruch Hashem, it's good because we have a good president who cares about this country, who loves our, the American people. But my answer to those who are saying that that um, we're robbing our kids of education, first of all, I mean, I, and I send my kids to the very right-wing cloistered schools. Um, ultra, ultra, ultra orthodox. The girls get a, a robust secular education. My boys, they know they know secular things on their own from home. I want them to get at school what I didn't get at school when I was their age. I want them to learn. I want them to learn Yiddish. I want them, to, you know, the, the whole day is everything in Yiddish, and they do get English, you know. And they, they meet the, and I taught English there, and it's, it's good enough. You know? But I taught English in the same schools where my kids go to school years ago. And still I have, I have you know, students, they come, they say they remember I was the best teacher there. But I'm not sending my kids to those schools so they should learn English. They know English already. And, and their peers don't, and that's fine. It's up to their parents how they want to raise their kids. It's not my business how people conduct themselves, how people choose to raise their kids, as long as, as long as they're not abusing their kids. And it's not abusive to raise your kids in a good, pious, humble, religious, uh, spiritual environment. And they're not taking that much money from the government for buses, for secular books, the meal plans that follows the student. And so does the bus and everything else. But, uh... My, but my answer, for you to say that somehow you know we're robbing our kids of something if we're not giving them this this type of education first of all I could say the same thing to you you're robbing your kids you know I remember in high school I went to a Jewish high school starting in 10th grade it's when I switched from public school to high school I had a very good Rebbe Moshe Weinberger he's a big rub in Woodbury New York now and one of the kids one of the kids said to him said hey, don't you feel bad? You're robbing your kids of uh, a Sega Genesis or a Super Nintendo or whatever they had in those days. The first PlayStation maybe was coming out. I don't know. I don't know what, what they call. I remember Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. That was that was what, what I couldn't afford yet. I only had the old Nintendo, right? Um, and then and they said no because I'm giving my kids Baba Kama, Baba Baba Mitzi and Baba Basra. Giving my kids Erevin and Sanhedrin and 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 uh, and and and, and, and Kedushin. 
that's what's important that my kids should have. And and and, and you know the one of the founders of Yale University, he said that uh, when he was exposed for the first time to the study of Talmud and Zohar and other things, he said this is a this is, that was Ezra Stiles. He was a, a he was a pastor and a professor and the president of the university. And he said this is a study that everyone should engage in. This is this is a very worthwhile study. He was a Christian pastor. He was a congregationalist pastor, and he recognized that. And you can't recognize how important it is to to learn to learn Torah. And and and. and uh, and, and you know, and these things are more important, at least in my view. And I'm not saying you have to do it. I mean, the, the Koreans understand it, though, and you don't understand it. I, I you know, but um, and it, it, it's it is what it is. So, because the, the Koreans all study Talmud. When you study the Talmud, you got everything. You got you got a lot more than you're going to get from just uh, uh, you know the the waste of time. I went to public school. You know how much time they wasted. You know how many times they showed us the Mighty Ducks and Cool Runnings, and 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 West Side Story, and uh, just just to fill up time because they had nothing better to do. And you're telling me, oh. Oh, we're wasting time. We're 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 spending all of our time learning God's word, which which t you know transforms our minds to think logically. And and the Koreans know that that's why the Jews are successful people because because we study the Talmud. And you want to waste time with with nonsense and take away time with stuff that's not necessary. It's enough what they have in the Hamish schools. They have math. They have. Uh, spelling, handwriting, reading, and in the reading books, there's a little bit of science, a little bit of history. You want to learn more, you know, when you have free time in the Yiddish newspapers and their Yid, their blood, they have they have stories of history, including American history and things, and they have, and Yiddish and and interesting things and science and things. You could you can do these things on your own. But do we, we have to take away precious time from learning Torah for this? For this? No, we don't. But they are getting an education. And, and, and in my opinion, it's a much better education than they're getting in any public school. But I understand you have a different view. So let's agree to disagree. But, and and so, so let's, here's the deal. I'm not going to force you to teach the Talmud in your public schools. Don't force me to t teach Shakespeare in my private schools. And if my ki and I don't have a problem with my kids learning Shakespeare, but another parent might, and I respect that. That's one thing. Although uh, my daughter, she's learning. She, they're they're reading Sherlock Holmes, in 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 the very in the Frumist school. You name you know what people think the Frumist, and the in, in the Frumist community, in the girls' school, and they're they're reading Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. You know, and uh, that's what and, uh, you know. So, um, you know, it's, that's the other thing. It's not as, as cloistered as you think. And it's a funny thing. Lubavitch, who are considered like more modern by the Hasidic standards, they don't have any English in a lot of their schools. No, nothing. They're just learning all day. Whereas the Satmar, they, they, every Satmar school, Satmarov insisted you had to have English in every school. And he said, if you don't want to have English, you send to a different school. So... Thank you for watching. God bless. But but enough is enough because the thing is, it's a slippery slope. One thing's going to lead to another, and that's what these commies really want. That's what Nick Muster really wants. He wants to destroy our schools, fill it with heresy and licentiousness and all kinds of evil, disgusting things, and that's what's really going on. And and the thing is, you want that in your schools? Go to hate. Open your own schools. Send to public school. Phase. What are you going to do when when this happens? And then they're going to see. Then they're going to impose it on the Catholic schools, and they're going to impose it on the Muslim schools, and the Catholics and the Muslims are going to say, "Who caused this? Who caused these abominations? Teaching the abominations to be forced down our throats? It was the Jews. 
And, and so people like you are causing anti-Semitism, and the thing is they would be right to hate, to hate Jews for doing that if they're doing such a thing. And, and that's why we have to fight against this, because people like you, like all the Zionists and all the Marxists and all of you, you're destroying the Jewish people. You're making people hate Jews. That's why we have to say loud and clear, we have nothing to do with you. You do your thing, we do our thing. Shalom al Yisrael. Thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe. Come on, we'll see you later.